When I help someone build a home or a garage gym, before we get into the equipment, which honestly is the fun stuff, right? I go through a checklist of everything that we need in the gym to make sure it's gonna be a good, safe, comfortable place to train. So today I thought, since down the road here, pretty soon we're gonna get really deep into the equipment part of the gym, I would go over my checklist with you guys so that you can make sure that your gym is also a comfortable, safe, fun place to train. Welcome back everybody to the Gym Crafter Podcast. My name is Tim, I'm the head gym nerd here at gymcrafter.com. The website that I built to help ordinary folks build great garage and home gyms that we absolutely love. And today we're gonna to talk about exactly what goes into that. And as usual on the podcast, we're gonna start with an update on my garage gym build. As you can see behind me, uh, I've got the lighting almost all the way in. If you're following me over on Instagram, I posted a couple of tutorial videos over there that show you exactly what I've been doing for the lights. Basically what I did was I took what they call an LED neon light strip. I've run it around the base of the outside of the gym, and then I'm gonna put some baseboard over it, which isn't up now, that'll hopefully direct that to the ground and just give it a nice kind of a glowing effect. Quite honestly, if I didn't have a YouTube channel, I wouldn't be doing that, but I think it's gonna make some nice uh, backdrops for some of the photography that I'm doing and some of the videos that I'm shooting. So that's where we're at with the gym. As far as the equipment in the gym goes, I just need to be honest with you guys. I don't personally like training in my gym right now. Uh, I've got four pieces of equipment in here, which look, all of them are right for some people. The, these definitely have their customer bases. That customer base is just not me. So I've got to be real honest. I'm struggling to get motivated to come in here and train. Uh, I can't train with a regular barbell right now because of the, the way that these racks work and the way that they're, the J hooks work and the way that the safeties work. So I'm training on a Smith machine though. Anyway, you don't need to know about all the gory details, but uh, if you are an experienced garage gym person, these are probably not for you. Just a, across the board, they're probably just not for you. I've had a lot of folks in here to test these out. If you're new to garage gym stuff, if you're new to training, if you don't lift a whole lot of weight, these are great for you. If you're on a budget, if you wanna do something that's just easy and buy everything all in one, they're great. But I gotta be honest, I am not a fan. So to counteract that, I actually went ahead and bought a couple of things that were on my list for what this gym is gonna be down the road. So sitting over here in a couple of boxes, I haven't put them together yet, are my two new benches. What I decided to do was I sold my Blackwing, I sold the black and white AB5200. Uh, those went right away. I got a good price, the buyer got a good price. And what I did was I bought the, the benches that I've been drooling over for a long time. So I've got an F, uh, a Rep Fitness FB5000 with a wide pad in the clear grind color. I can't wait to start using a flat bench again. I mentioned that before. And then I bought another AB5200, but I bought it in the clear grind color. And I felt a little bougie doing that, but I just, I like that color so much that, and I know I'm gonna have these benches for a while. These are my benches for a long time unless I test something for somebody. So I just went ahead and bought those. I needed something to make me feel more motivated to come in here and train. So at least I'm on a bench that I like, training on a piece of equipment that I really don't like. So that's where the gym is. Uh, the gym itself is coming along and, and that's why I wanna talk about today. As I wrap up testing all of this kind of budget level gear and I start getting into what racks gonna be in here, what bars are gonna be in here, what plates are gonna be in here, I wanted to kind of wrap up all of the details. And whenever I do home gym consults with people, I always go through a checklist of things to make sure, like I said in the intro, that they're going to like being in their gym because I had a really good comment from Kurt from the Kurt Locker talk about not needing indoor cardio because he's like, hey, as long as you've got the outside, you've got your legs, you don't need cardio. And if everybody had the discipline that Kurt does, man, that would be awesome. Uh, unfortunately, most of the people that I train and most people that I deal with have very little self-discipline, especially if they're a, a new garage gym owner. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. This takes, a, to build a habit of training regularly, it's a pretty big deal. So the less excuses that people have, what I found is the more apt they are. So if you're in that boat and you're like, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start training, and you're really motivated, understand that at some point your motivation is gonna go away and you're gonna have to rely on discipline. And if you haven't built that, what you're gonna start doing is you're gonna start looking for excuses of why you don't wanna go into the gym. It's too dark, it's not comfortable, it's too cold, it's too hot, it's too humid. All the reasons that people don't go outside to do cardio, right? It's, it's raining, it's too cold, it gets dark early, there's too many bugs. 
uh, the neighborhood dog chased me down the street, which is a legitimate reason somebody told me they didn't do their cardio that week. So um, I want to talk about what we do in the gym to really make it an enjoyable place to be. And when you have all these things in place, it really is a fun place to go. And, and I really enjoy my gym because I have these things. So let me get into what this, this checklist has on it. All right, looking at my checklist, I lied. I got one more thing to go over before we get into the actual items, and that's your help. I need your help on something. So we're going to be getting deep into the gear, like I said, after this episode. And my next few episodes that I planned out are on selecting a rack for your gym. We're going to do one episode on all the different kinds of racks, half racks, bench racks, squat racks, squat stands, full racks, power cages, collapsible, like helping people who are building a home gym really pick out, we're going to go over what are the pros and cons of each of those. The next episode we're going to go over once you've picked out the format of rack is what are the things you should look for? What gauge steel, uh, what size holes, what type of hole spacing, um, what weight capacity, all that kind of fun stuff. And then the third episode for racks is probably going to be all of you guys correcting me. I'm going to take all of the feedback from the first two episodes and hopefully I'll have enough to make a third episode and fill in any holes. And then if I think it's beneficial, I might do another rack episode and really talk about who makes the best racks uh, who, do, who makes the best budget racks, who makes the best high-end racks, and really hope, hopefully help steer some people in the right direction. I know a lot of you guys out there know a ton more about this. I can only test so many racks. So if you could email me at tim at gymcrafter.com or drop a comment below, let me know what should be covered in these upcoming rack episodes. And again, the goal is to help people who are either redoing their gym or somebody building a home gym for the first time what do they need to know about racks, the kind of racks, the things to look at in a rack, and so forth. So if you guys gave me some help with that, I would really appreciate it. It would be really helpful for the people that listen to this podcast or watch this podcast. And oh, by the way, this week, this podcast should be available on the audio formats. It should have already been done, except some of these services are a little bit shady. Uh, I, I'm not against commercials on the podcast, but some of the quote unquote free hosting services, they're free because they riddle your podcast with commercials. And I didn't want to do that to you guys. So uh, hopefully this week I'll have that solved. And for those of you who have asked to have this in an audio format, we're going to have that soon. So let's get into this checklist. Okay. So as far as things that make your gym a good place to be, we're just going to start on the ground now. Episode two of the podcast was talking about flooring, but I can't stress enough how important flooring is. I've seen a bunch of people redoing their gyms recently. Again, Kurt from the Kurt Locker is going to be doing this. Uh, Gray Matter Lifting, another really good account to follow on uh, Instagram. Does some really good reviews. Just redid his entire gym. I'm going to reference him a couple times. Just put an all new floor. Everybody's getting their flooring from the same place. Ashton over at Freedom Fitness. I'm going to put the link down below. If you're in the market for flooring, look Ashton up. If you need to know more about flooring, check out that episode two of the podcast. In short, you really want rubber flooring in your gym. It's going to be safe. It's going to provide some insulation. It's just, it's really what you should have. It's going to look the nicest. So I always start with that with people. Let's lay down a good foundation of flooring. The next thing is paint. Jake over at Garage Gym Experiment just did a post, I think today or yesterday, on the difference that it makes with paint. And he just did a storage project. It looks fantastic. We're going to talk about storage in a second. But he did like a before and after of when the walls were just, you know, dirty, traditional garage white. And then he painted them like this really cool dark gray. And even though the gear is the same, the stuff is the same, it looks like two completely different gems. It really does. So paint is something that's, that's going to make a big difference. As you guys know from watching this podcast, don't use outdoor paint in your garage. Uh, that's, you're going to be in for a bad time with that. But I'm really happy with how my garage came out in the paint. I've got some trim work going up soon once I get these baseboards over this lighting. I've got some more cool stuff that's kind of paint-like. I'm going to finish the front of the garage and I'm going to finish uh, some, sel some shelves over here. And you'll get to see that once I do it. Again, follow over on the Instagram uh, at just Jim Crafter and you'll see me doing that stuff. But pick a color that makes you want to be in your garage. If you're going to clear everything out and put in a gym, take the time to paint the walls. And if white works for you, that's great. But I would say pick a color that you like. Pick a red or a blue or a gray. You don't need to list all the colors. That's ridiculous. Um, but pick a color that you like. Pick something. I like darker colors for a garage gym. I kind of like that cave-ish feeling, which is going to be in contrast to what we're going to talk about next, which is lighting. But 
I like a nice rich color. Now do what you like to do in your garage, but I can tell you that it's a night and day difference. And again, look at that post from, uh, from Garage Gym Experiment. If I get froggy when I'm editing this video, I'll actually put it up for you. I don't know if I will or not, but uh, I might pull those out so that you can see it here on the video portion of the podcast. But, but put some paint up and make your garage look nice and clean and fresh. You're gonna really like that. The next thing is lighting. Now, there's so many different kinds of lighting. I have an article over on gymcrafter.com. Just go to gymcrafter.com forward slash lighting. I go over all of the options. I go over all different kinds of lighting, color temperatures, lighting sources, uh, natural lighting, all that kind of stuff. I don't wanna make this video real long by going into all of that. The one thing that I would suggest, and this, is, this has made a big difference at a lot of the folks' gyms who I've helped build, is 5,000 degree Kelvin lighting. 5,000 degrees Kelvin, they measure light in a temperature range in degrees Kelvin. And 5,000 degrees Kelvin is the same color temperature as the sun. And your body and your eyes especially have developed over time to respond to sunlight. It gives you energy. So it's nice to have this color temperature lighting. It wakes you up, it keeps you going. It really does make a big difference versus like a, a warmish kind of incandescent light that's got you know kind of a reddish hue to it. Those types of lights will actually kind of drain energy from your body a little bit. Now it's not a huge difference, but it's enough of a difference that everybody I've recommended, they change their lighting to nice bright 5,000 degree lighting. They really notice a difference. And that's why I like the dark paint and the bright lights. So I kind of like that dark, dingy cave gym feeling. I've been to a lot of powerlifting gyms. I really like the feel. And the dark paint on the walls gives me that sense of kind of a darker, cavey type gym. But the nice, bright lights overhead give me that energy. I think it's a nice balance, but lighting is important. The lights I've got in here are a six pack of LED shop lights I got on Amazon. I think at the time I bought them, they were like 60 or 70 bucks for all six of them. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be fancy. But if you just address the lighting in your gym, it's gonna make a big difference in just the atmosphere and the enjoyability of the gym. Next, let's talk about storage. So I've got a bunch of shelves up here. I built what I call a little mini shed in here. It's a fancy term for, I just, I blocked off a quarter of the, the garage with some shelving and I'm gonna seal off the back of the, of the shelves. But you need a place to put your stuff. Uh, again, if, on that, post for Garage Gym Experiment where he shows the paint. He also just finished a, a wall storage project, which came out fantastic. Jake used this company called Wall Control. You can see all the information on the post that he did, and it really looks fantastic. You can do pegboard, you can do uh, Kurt, and then, oh, I can't remember the person that just, they just moved their gym. Um, Garden, I think Kaizen. DIY, uh, I'm pretty sure that's who it is, just moved in a new house, and they put these French cleat walls up on their wall. French cleats are little angled pieces of wood, and you can hang stuff really easily and move it around. Looks really cool, has kind of a vintage look to it, really versatile, and doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. A lot of times when you buy storage from these manufacturers, it looks nice, but if you're gonna buy like barbell gun racks from Rogue, you're gonna be, you're gonna be ponying up a lot of money to buy that stuff and a lot of the storage options you can do DIY. So if you don't like the wall control stuff that Jake shows over on Garage Gym Experiment, check out the French cleat stuff that Kaizen, and if I'm wrong, I'll put that up on the screen when I edit, but I'm pretty sure that's, that's who it is, Kaizen D, DIY. That French cleat stuff works really well. Shelves are really good. Just be organized. You don't have to be super anal about it, but you're just gonna need a place to put stuff. One of the things I don't like about these two racks, they've got some hooks, but there's no place to put like the spotter arms. There's no place to put like the, the, the J hooks. There's no place to put some of the attachments. So I end up putting stuff on the floor or setting it down and tripping over it. And if I had storage, and the reason I don't is because these are temporary. If these were permanent, I would, but get yourself some shelving. A lot of the companies now, whether it's Rep or Fringe, or Rogue, They're, they've got this in-rack storage that you can do with pegboards on the back or little tray shelves. Just figure out some storage for your, for your gym. I always talk to people about that, especially before they build their gym, because I don't think a lot of people realize, for experienced garage gym people, you know that you accumulate accessories you know, just it's just crazy how quickly these things accumulate. It's like gremlins, it's like feeding gremlins after midnight for an old guy reference. It's just they multiply, or is it you put water on them? Somebody drop a comment in the 
below, it, did the gremlins multiply from putting water on them or feeding them after? I don't remember, but e either way, <laughs> this stuff tends to multiply on its own. So having a place to store all of your accessories, your fat grips and your bands and your, your cable accessories, it's just, there's just a ton of stuff. So leave room or leave space either on the wall or someplace else for storage. It's another big one before you start getting equipment into your gym. All right, that's the physical gym itself. Now let's talk about being comfortable in your gym. And I've got, I realize when I read in my gym how much of this stuff I've got in here, but let's talk about a few things that are important to have in your gym. Number one, a high output fan or three. I've got two in this gym. I think a high output fan is worth its weight in gold. If you do nothing else on this list, a nice fan. Now, I've shopped for fans all over the place. I used to recommend going to Amazon, but actually Walmart, Costco, and Sam's Club all have really good deals for not, you know, 50, 60 bucks tops. You can pick up a high output fan that you can just carry around. There's some that Walmart had a great deal on one not too long ago that you hung up on the corner. I think Coach Carp, again, another good Instagram channel to follow. Coach Carp had one that was red that matched his gym that I think Walmart was selling that you can hang up on the wall or from the ceiling, but get yourself a fan. If you can get one up on the ceiling, that works even better, but get yourself a nice high output fan. Thank me later if you don't already have one. I'm guessing most of you guys already have one, but if you're building a gym from scratch, it always surprises me how many people don't think to put in a fan. And that's one of the first things I have people buy because I've got my fan running as I'm building equipment, as I'm painting, as I'm putting in flooring, my fans are running all the time. So get yourself a fan. In the interest of cooling your gym, there's a few things that are gonna come into, into play. Number one, if you live in a humid, cli a humid client, if you live in a humid climate, I cannot recommend a dehumidifier enough. In fact, I made an entire video about the importance of a dehumidifier, not only for your comfort, but also for the longevity of your gear. There's nothing worse for, for your barbells than a lot of humidity, especially if you don't have, if you have inexpensive stainless steel barbells or you have Cerakote barbells or you have bare steel especially, uh, whatever barbells you end up with, if you end up with racks like this that aren't necessarily powder coated the best, the more humidity you've got in your gym, the more your stuff is gonna corrode and rust. The other nice thing about humidity, is there's a couple of things, number one, is when there's high humidity, that's when mold starts to grow. And if any of you have ever had issues with mold, it's not pretty. I've got a couple of friends who have had mold toxicity issues and it is not an ordeal you wanna go through. If you've got a dehumidifier in your gym in the summertime, you're gonna prevent the mold from growing. And it, and it grows, unfortunately, it grows in places that you wouldn't expect. You know, it grows under your shelving. It grows under the rubber flooring if there was moisture trapped under there. It just, it's just gross. It's bad for your health and you, and you really don't want to have that. So a dehumidifier is great for that. And we're going to talk about air conditioning next. If you can't get an air conditioner into your gym, and I'm going to talk about a few different options for a couple different options for that, then having a dehumidifier makes a massive difference. I just did a video of my five minute Friday uh, that was last week was on portable air conditioners and the few things that you need to know to to see if you can even use one. There's three things you need to know to use a portable AC. Go check that video out. It'll tell you everything you need to know to use a portable air conditioner. But the short story is a lot of garage gym owners cannot use a portable air conditioner. They're kind of stuck because they either don't have a window or they don't, just watch the video, you'll see what I mean. A dehumidifier can offset that. At least you're getting the humidity out of the air. You combine that with a fan and you can get your garage pretty darn comfortable. Now, something I didn't mention in that video, but a bunch of people commented, and I'm gonna be putting in the pinned comment for that video, is something called a mini split air conditioning system. What a mini split air conditioning system is, is it's a, it's a system where there's a big unit inside, and then there's a couple of lines that go out to a compressor outside. It's like a single room central air is basically what it is. It's a very small compressor that sits outside. Now, you can install these yourself, I used to sell them at Apt Electronics in, in, here in Illinois, and I can tell you that we didn't let customers self-install because if you crimp one of the lines that go from the inside to the outside, you've literally ruined the entire thing. You can't fix the line, you can't replace the line, you've ruined the entire thing. So if you can, I would have them professionally installed. For those of you folks out there who were super handy, uh, that you can self-install them, a bunch of the people that were in the comments for that last video, that's what they did. They self-installed their mini split. 
but look it up. If you've got a freestanding outdoor garage that's not attached, or you've got some exterior walls. I live in a townhouse, so I've got units on either side. I can't use this either. But if you've got you know, a wall on either side and your garage gets really hot, a mini split unit is really comes in handy. The other nice thing about mini splits is some of them have either heat or what are called heat pumps in them. And in the winter time when it gets cold, they can also serve as a heater. So it's really like putting HVAC, like an actual central HVAC unit into your garage they run a couple thousand dollars, so they're a little pricey, but I've helped a few people build garage gyms, and that's one of the first things they did, and they just they didn't want to at first, but they just rave about it afterwards, and the nice thing about those is they're powerful enough to where they'll cool down your garage gym. They're, you can put them on, a lot of them are smart now, so you can program them, them to go on a couple hours before you train, so that's one really good option. Now, the mini split, like I said, can do heat. There's two other options for heat. Now, I actually spent time several winters ago and I bought, I think, every portable space heater you could buy at Menards, Lowe's, Home Depot, Amazon, and I tested all of them. Uh, I'll link the video up above and, and down below in the description, but I made a video. I know it's the middle of summer right now and this podcast is coming out, but if you're listening to this in wintertime, I do have an entire video on space heaters. There was a clear winner, and I don't remember which one it was. It's sitting right over here, but uh, there is a, a space heater that's a winner. And if you're a space heater type person, and I got to tell you, it's easier for me to suck it up and train in here when it's hot and humid. That doesn't bother me so much. For those of you out there with hair, you're lucky. Uh, it's one of the functions of hair is to catch the sweat. And my bald head just sweats everywhere. It gets in my eye. It's, it's awful. But I can deal with that. When the barbells freeze your hand when you touch them, not a big fan of that. By the way, little hack, hand warmers, shake up some hand warmers, put them on the bar where you touch it, uh, come back in five, 10 minutes, your bars won't freeze your hands, which I do a lot here in Chicago. You're gonna want a, a space heater or that mini split. The other thing that you can do is, is a gas powered, what they call a shop heater that you can mount in your garage. Now you would typically need either a high voltage power line or uh, a, gas, a gas feed to a natural gas. But that's another one. Long, very long story short, get the HVAC, get the, the climate control done in your garage. So again, dehumidifier, something to cool you down, a fan, a portable air conditioner, a mini split, something like that, uh, something to keep you warm in the wintertime, a heater, a space heater, a, a shop heater, uh, again, a mini split unit. All of those things will make your garage or your basement or wherever you're training a whole lot more enjoyable to be in. Cause I gotta tell you that when it's, you know, last winter it hit minus 10 for a few days. And even though I'm in a middle unit, this garage was, I think it was 16 degrees one day. Cause I had to go out the garage door to get to my car. And I absolutely did not, did not train that. I was gonna say, I did not want to train that day. I did not train that day. <laughs> it just, just didn't happen. I wasn't gonna come in here. Um, even the space heater was just wouldn't cool, wouldn't warm my my garage up. So dealing with clients that I train, I know from experience that the more you take care of this this climate control stuff, the more apt you're going to be to actually come in and train in your garage and and be consistent. And as we all know, the most effective thing in training isn't what kind of rack you have, it's not what kind of barbell you have, it's not what color you paint the walls it's that you actually train on a regular basis. So whatever you can do to help your consistency, the better. Second to last item is an air purifier. I just did a video on my air purifier. It's the five minute Friday from two weeks ago. So go check that out. I, I bought a Mila, M-I-L-A. It has really saved my, saved my bacon, as they say, in the garage gym. And I liked it so much, I bought another one for the main house. I absolutely love this air purifier. I'm not associated with the company. I'll put a link down below for Amazon and make a couple bucks. And hey guys, uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. I forgot to say this before, but you know what to do. Like it, share it, subscribe. And then uh, if you heard of anything in here that I talked about that you like, like the pure air purifier, please use the affiliate links below. It helps me out, helps the channel out and helps me continue to make these videos every week. So thank you for that. But the link to the Mila is down below. If you're in the market for an air purifier, I don't see a reason to spend eight or $900 unless you're literally living in a chemical plant. These are, I think they're on sale for 4th of July for $329 or something. It's just 
I really like it. It's it's done a great job in my house. I like it so much I bought two. Don't need to spend any more time talking about it. I've talked about it a lot in the past, but go get yourself an air purifier. It really makes a difference in your gym. Again, just make it comfortable and make it safe. If you've got VOCs in your garage, you've got mold, you've got spores, you've got pollen, you've got all that stuff in your garage, then it's not gonna be an enjoyable place to go. And training with severe allergies, no bueno, right? These take all the pollen and stuff out of the air in your garage. It, it makes a difference in your seasonal allergies too. So can't speak highly enough about those. And uh, let's not talk about that anymore. The last one, and this is one that I'm feeling this real deeply right now. In order for me to fit these four pieces of equipment into my gym, as much room as I have, I have two big old leg press hack squat machines. I have two combo Smith machine cable rack uh, things. And um, that's my technical term, by the way. And I have no room to move around. Like I have no room. I can't do trap bar deadlifts right now. I can't do loaded. I can kind of do loaded carries if I wind my way around stuff. It is just things are so tight in here. And a, another, like I mentioned, gray matter lifting. He just redid his entire garage gym. He's got everything well organized on one side of his garage now. He's got a ton of gear in there. I was looking, I was trying to expand the picture to see everything he has in there. And he's got so much just well organized in there that he has plenty of room to move around and lift. One of the things you're going to want to plan for, and there's another page that I follow called the No Wine Cellar. And this guy has got like eight gyms worth of gear crammed into his basement. So I, like that to me is a little much. Like I'm not sure I could walk around or train in there, but in addition to that, he's got a nice big open area to lift in upstairs. He does a lot of strongman stuff, so they do like the log lifts out there, do deadlifting out there. Whether it's in a separate area like that or whether it's in your garage gym itself, leave yourself an open area to, tr to, to just train in, whether you're doing ground-based calisthenics, whether you're doing kettlebells, whether you're doing uh, trap bar deadlifts with reps, open trap bar, the world's largest open trap bar. Uh, I'm probably gonna change that out for that reason, but uh, it, you just need room. You gotta give yourself room. And that requires that you plan out where your other equipment is gonna go. So before we get into the equipment down the road here in the next episodes of the podcast, take some time and go, okay, I've got this much room for equipment, but give yourself some room to train, some room to walk around, some room to just to just train that's not inside of a rack. If you get a nice rack, you can do a lot of stuff inside the rack, but, but seriously, leave yourself some room to train in and then also think about how you're gonna organize everything. And we're look, we're gonna talk about how much space you need for a squat rack, how much space you need for a leg press, how much space you need for all that stuff, but leave yourself some space to do some carries, leave yourself some space to do some deadlifts, leave yourself some space. If you're into Olympic lifting or CrossFit, some room to do that stuff. Coming into a, a place like this, it, it just, it stresses me out when I come in here because everything's on top of each other. I literally can't use the, the landmine attachments on these racks because I just, I don't have 84 inches in front of them. I've got a leg press in the way. You guys get the idea. I've got this rack mounted lever hack squat thing from RitFit that requires just a massive amount of room on the side of it. So I'm constantly taking that on and off to, just to be able to, you guys get the idea. <laughs> but anyway, that's the last, the last point for that. So what do you guys think? What did I miss? What are some things that you guys have done in your gyms to make it just the gym itself, not the gear, the gym itself? What have you done to your gym to make it a much more enjoyable place to be? I talked about, I'm surprised I didn't bring this up. I talked about stereos in another episode. You know, music's one of them. I couldn't do this without music. But what are some things you guys are doing? Uh, what did I miss? What can we put in the pinned comment down below so that this video becomes a better resource for people? And like I mentioned at the beginning, the next few episodes are going to be dedicated to racks. So what do I need to know about getting a nice rack, right? There you go. Uh, that's what she said. What do I need to know about racks? What do I need to share, for, share with people on top of what I might have already come up with? And that is it for today's episode of the Gym Crafter Podcast. I really thank you guys as usual, for everybody that listened that long, I really appreciate it. If you listened this long, hopefully you liked it, so you hit that like button. If you listened this long and you did like it, I don't understand why you would do something like that, but thank you anyway. Drop me a comment to let me know what can make uh, your next half hour with me more enjoyable. But until that next half hour, until the next video, I'm Tim with Jim Crafter.